Good morning, good afternoon, good evening around the world, and welcome to uh, the uh, IWA webinar um, on elevating utilities through the new IBNet data partnership. We will hear today from insights from actual practical experience of uh, folks that have worked with the new IBNet partnership in very different roles, in roles in quality assurance, in roles in branches on environmental management, in roles as heads and chairman of boards. We will hear from utilities around the world around what it meant for them to join the new IBNet data partnership and how it helped elevate their utility. Um, in doing this, I'm very, very glad to um, share with you that indeed, as we had said, we will be able to do a tour tour around the world um, from and hear from utilities in many different countries. My name is Monica Weber-Farr. I'm with the new IBNet team at the World Bank, and I am happy to welcome uh, Walter Emnas from a Minilat Water Company in Manila, Ms. Seval Ostrog Yaman and Mr. Ahmed Aladak uh, from ASCII and Ankara in Turkey, uh, Mr. Castigo Cosa, um, Chairman of the Board of the uh, Water Company in Maputo, Mozambique, and Ms. Wendy Harrison Smith, uh, the uh, Research and Development Manager at the National Water Commission in Jamaica. Um, we will um, be hearing before we hear from them and get to find out a little bit more about their experience in their utility space. We will first be hearing um, uh, from Marco Aguero and Berta Aceva at the World Bank that will introduce us a little bit to go um, uh, to go to and understand a bit better the new IBNet piece. Before we do all of that, we want to hear from you though. Uh, we want to hear where are you joining us from? So in order to do that, if you could use your mobile phone, um, go, you see up here, it says polf.com forward slash new IBNet 915. And the question is, where are you joining us from? So we're trying to get to hear from you Answer to the question, where are you joining us from? If you are in the chat function, you can see the link to polf.com forward slash new ibnet 915. And there you click on that and then you can tell us where are you joining us from? Somebody has already said that they're joining us from Abuja, Nigeria. But if you can do a click, we actually will see that in the names. Uh, sorry, in the, on the on the screen, you will see here the that big map that we all see. So we can see different people from different countries coming in here. Um, uh, Joaquim Bie, you also said greetings. Thank you for greeting us. And if you can, uh, by any chance, click on the uh, link provided in the chat function or that you're seeing on the screen to paulf.com forward slash new IBNet 915 and tell us where you're joining us from. We're with 34 participants at the moment already. So I would figure that we're coming from many different places. So there's a few of us from Europe, some Africans, a couple of North Americans, a few Latin Americans. Please click on polf.com forward slash new at 915 and tell us where you're coming from so that we get a sense for that. We would like to ask you one more question and hello to Sweden, hello to Tanzania. Um, I would like, we would like to ask you one more question. Uh, Gil, can you put up that question? And uh, we would like to hear from you whether you're familiar with IBNet at all. Maybe you are a frequent user. Maybe you've never heard about it and are wondering what is IBNet. Maybe you're somewhere in the between. And if I could say hello for, to the participant from Peru. In the meantime, and hello to the participant from Switzerland. 
IWA is a great network of water professionals. So we're not surprised to see you coming from anywhere and everywhere. And while you're telling us how familiar you are with IBNET, let me share with you that we have been planning this webinar for several months with our colleagues from the International Water Association and IWA. And uh, when we were planning it, we didn't realize how on time and quite important, this particular webinar would actually be, because in the meantime, we have agreed with IWA that we and the IBNET team would sponsor the participation of five, up to five colleagues that work with utilities and who get their utility to enter their 2022 data and uh, management self-assessment sometime between this past Monday and uh, November 10, I believe, is the, is the final date. So in the next four weeks. So if any of those listening in uh, can get your organizations to join UIBNet and update their data, bring in their data and their management self-assessment, you can actually join us or you get a chance to join us to be amongst the five uh, participants whom we will sponsor to join the IWA Congress in Kigali um, that is taking place, I believe, from December 10 to 14, um, so that uh, we can all not only see each other on a webinar, but maybe even um, meet in person. And I'm welcoming participants in the meantime from Pakistan, from Romania, from the Czech Republic. And I can see we have quite a few people who do not know much about IBNET, and some who do know a little bit, and then we've got a few frequent frequent users. I believe, uh, Gil, we have a third and last question, do we? Uh, do you want to put that up? Yes, we wanted to know whether you had any views on how data can support water and sanitation utilities. We will let this question run in the background so that you can add some of these questions as we go along throughout this webinar. And we will use what you're putting there in terms of perspectives at the end to make sure we can reflect it with everyone. And I can already see that people are looking at decision-making as an input, uh, finding solutions. That's what we use data for. Now, we let me now go to Marco Aguera and Berta Maceva and invite you to tell us a little bit more about what is new IBNet and how does it serve utilities. So um, if I may invite you, Marco and Berta, to come in and yes. tell us. Thank you. Thank you very much, Monica, for that uh, very good introduction. Uh, so as Monica mentioned, my name is Marco Aguero. I'm a senior water supply and sanitation specialist uh, based for now in, in, in Washington, DC and working along uh, Berta and uh, other team members on the on the process of the redesign and uh, uh, rollout and implementation of the new IBNet. So uh, as you can see, um, uh, today is a, a presentation, yes, is to explain a little bit more about the platform itself, but uh, actually the, the underlying objective is, 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 is how to, to help utilities not to improve uh, their decision making process by using their own data no by using their own insights so that's the overall our overarching objective of 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 the whole new ibnet uh next please so uh what we know now is that the uh, data is a is a is a valuable resource that is actually produced by utility on a daily basis. No, uh, utilities produce data regarding the operation uh, of the system itself, uh, around uh, their managerial practices. Uh, uh, every day, no, uh, utilities produce and sit on on large uh, quantities of data. Um, but uh, despite that, uh, many utilities still struggle not to to reach this turnaround process. Uh, moving from an uh, unviable uh, technical and financial utility to a, a pretty worthy and technical viable utility. No? So it's a long process. And throughout the process, of course, you need data to support decision-making to reach your targets. No? Um, so uh, the experience from the World Bank is that 
what we understand is that self-assessment no, um, can help you in, in two in two ways. One is to understand where you are, no, where you are uh, at in comparison with others, but also to help you determine where you want to go. No, so that is basically the two the two main uh, um, reasons. No, why uh, data and comparing ourselves with others is is really important. Now, uh, IBNet, uh, as as many of you have been already acquainted to IBNet, since we saw one of the questions, though that uh, most of you are, uh, have been exposed at some point. Uh, IBNet has been around uh, for more than 20 years now. It's a, it's a, a benchmarking platform that has been hosted by, by the World Bank. And at one point, uh, collected data from over 2,000 utilities uh, around the world. No? Uh, but it was mainly used by development planners and by academia. No? Really, really was used by, by utilities to help them in that decision-making process. No? So we quickly understood uh, after you know, assessing you know, what has happened you know, the last uh, the last two decades around the data and data culture, we quickly quickly understood uh, that we, uh, the new Ibinet need to need to transition to a more uh, collaborative platform. You know? So this is what uh, we uh, when we decided to to ask you no know, to ask the the different uh, actually the different users of of the data the people that are at the forefront of the utilities to understand what were their pains and their gains regarding uh data gaps and co data collection and also regarding uh how can they better use uh, the data that they collect no so this is just some examples of the user centric design we follow no and for us it was very important to put the utility at the center of of all of this process and uh we want to make the new ib network not for for uh, us as development planners but mainly for utilities as I mentioned, who are at the forefront of all of the service delivery. So this is how New IBNet was born. Uh, it was born as a place, uh, as we would like it to be, the place no, where utilities can go and share their data, use their data, but most importantly, connect and learn uh, from each other. No? And as you can see, the New IBNet has actually three basic features. No? And if you go to the website, you will quickly see these features, the data entry portal, the dashboards, and the community portal piece, which is actually uh, the place where we, we utilities and, and regulators and any other stakeholder that has an interest in improving performance of utilities can go there and can learn from others. Now, um, you may be asking, okay, what's what's new about the new IBNet for those who have already been known IBNet in the past? Well, I can tell you five things. The first one is that the new IBNet has been developed as a as a, a, a platform for data services, no? where utilities can go and check different insightful dashboards about uh, their performance, uh, easy to check insights, and, and as I mentioned at the beginning, uh, it is important when an utility can compare themselves with others to quickly understand uh, their position and where they want to go. No? So this is one of the first main features. No? The second feature is that for us, less is more. No? The IBNet one had around uh, almost 100 indicators, which translated in about 500 data points. And it was really, really a, a burden no, for DTs to to, to come up and 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 complete that uh, that series of data and and that created whole different problems around the consistency quality data gaps uh, and it was really unmanageable no so we have reduced that to 15 core indicators based on an assessment we did to uh, for regulators around the world where we quickly identify which were the 15 core most commonly used indicators by utilities third is the management practices this is a self assessment uh, exercise uh, where utilities get to um, reflect on how are they implementing the managerial practices in different components of the services. This is a, a, an internal assessment. assessment. This will not be shared or is it's not public for now. It will only be for the consumption of the utility themselves uh, be, because we want to keep this a uh, very honest exercise. No? Uh, in case of the KPIs, the, the indicators will be 
will be disclosable and accessible to the public. Fourth is the peer-to-peer -peer learning. This is where the community and community of practice piece comes in. We, you will have the opportunity as an utility, as a utility member to share your data, but also to connect with other utilities uh, that are operating under perhaps similar context, similar circumstances, and, and engage with them to understand, okay, how, how were you able to reach that, that target and, uh, and learn a little bit uh, from, from those. Uh, most importantly is that utilities are in charge. Uh, this is a self-directed data entry. We have completely eliminated the use of, of Excel sheets. It's not actually a survey. We're, uh, you're, what we want is for you to share your data, but actually use your own data for decision-making purposes. No, And the system is uh, parameterized in terms of uh, uh, ensuring that the, the data that you that you upload is consistent enough and has the the minimum quality needed. Next, uh, Bert, over to you. Thank you so much, Marco, uh, and thank you everyone for joining. My name is Berta Mashev. I'm working jointly with Marco, and I'll take uh, the slides over from here. Uh, so these are the fifteen key performance indicators that Marco has mentioned. Uh, I wanted to 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 note that this downgrade or, or the, the 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 less is more that we decided a project we decided to take it was looking at what the, the, do generally regulators look at, right? There are so many indicators, there are so many data that utilities produce, but we wanted to see okay what is it that usually regulators like to collect and to publish so that it's also comfortable to share with IBNet and share with others within the community of the IBNet. So we came up with these 15 indicators, which are more related to, I mean, you all know these indicators very well. Most of them utilities collect on a regular basis. Some of them much organized than others, but these are the, are the indicators that we have. So more on the operations uh, for water supply and also on sanitation. And we do understand that not all utilities do sanitation. Some do, uh, some do not. So for those that do not collect information on sanitation, then these indicators, of course, are not. So you only uh, provide those indicators that are collected on sanitation. We have on commercial operations, we have on financial management, and then on human resources. I have to say here that um, uh, we have an issue with this slide because we don't collect, of course, the this, the, the 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 continuity on on what is on on, uh, on sanitation. Uh, this was we thought about this in the beginning, but this this, this indicator was was removed. So we need to to revise the slide to reflect that. Looking forward to the future, we have seen that in most of the countries in developing worlds, and those are the countries that the World Bank work, works with. Of course, we want all others to join us, but there's they do sanitation not on not on on the conventional way, meaning that they have big sewers, big water water treatment plants, but they also have. Uh, other kinds of service like at, as like off-grid sanitation. So this is something that we cannot penalize utilities and say they don't do this service because they are doing that service, just they're doing it on a different way. In some cases are utilities, some cases are not utilities, they, but they're working with municipalities, with others, because if they provide what this water is going somewhere. So we want to know where this water is going. So we are working with uh, with this, our, our, some of our partners to, to, to test uh, these new sanitation indicators is going to be something very simple that we can also roll out next year. So we want also to see what we can do in terms of, of standard reports for utilities, because at the end of the day, if utilities submit data to us, you expect something back. So we want to see what, what is it, the kind of report that can be useful for you on your regular basis or on when you report to your regulators or to your uh, ministers, or if you go to an event like this, for instance, that you want to share where you are, so you can use some of these reports and you can you can, you can share it with other people. And we and the new IBNet is going to be uh, dynamic, as you already see. This is the first year that you're collecting data with these 15 indicators, but we see that as we go forward, uh, you, you, uh, indicators will change. We have a lot of demand in terms of uh, indicators on climate change. We are still figuring out how we can do that to be meaningful for utilities. Again, we need to make this very, very clear. This is to be meaningful for utilities. So how can we include climate resilience indicators that utilities can use and can share with others? Okay, so this is the, the, the dashboard that we have. Um, 
that shows on the new webinar how are we comparing utilities against other utilities, right? So on this first phase, we didn't want uh, to, to, to bring, I mean, singular utilities. We wanted to see on one dashboard where in general utilities sit and then where utilities can be and they can compare against each other. So if you see, uh, if I can use my pointer, if you see this is the mainland water services, which is here also as one of our panelists. Uh, if you see uh, this green dot shows where mainland sits compared with 50% of utilities that we have in the sample. So we see that most utilities in the sample sit on this line, which is kind of a gray bluish line. And this is where mainland sits compared to all those. And uh, uh, Wally will not let me lie because we had this discussion. When we talked about um, uh, non-revenue water in terms of liters per connection per hour. So most utilities in the sample, they sit on the lower spectrum, but lower no, Wally no, noted that, okay, my utility is a little bit above. So what is it that is happening with my utility or what is it that we are not doing that others are doing so that they know their non-revenue water is better than ours. So this is the kind of exercise that we want to do with all of you or utilities that participate here and they can see, okay, what, what is it that can be done? Now, these are other kinds of, of dashboards that we have where we can slice and dice and we can see more details. Uh, for instance, on your, on, on your left side of the screen, you see in terms of income groups, and this you are looking at income groups based on what the bank, World Bank defines. And then on the right side, we also have more like one specific indicator where utilities stand against others. Now, going to the self-assessment uh, on the management practices. We looked at the, what others are doing in terms of assessing or how, what are, what, what are doing in terms of understanding how can KPIs can be improved? We look, we work with the World Management Survey, and they're working on health cent, on health uh, sector, we, on on health education, and they are doing this. They they're, they're assessing their management practices and finding ways to improve their management practices now in in such in, in such a way that then can influence positively on their KPIs. So these are the ad, ad, ad management practices that we have. So these are we have 10, 27 questions related to commercial operations, commercial relations, operations, and financial, where the utility goes and then they select there's a, a set of options. The utility selects the option that they where they they, they feel that they, they, they fit in. And then at the end, I'll show a thing on the next slide how we we we, we present that, right? But again, here the management practices are going to change. I mean, over time. Um, and then one thing that we also wanted to 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 highlight here, and this is also what Marco mentioned, this is what happens in your kitchen. It's like we like to say on IBNet is if you go to a restaurant, you like the KPI is the food that's presented in your table, right? But how the food is cooked behind the kitchen, no one wants to know, right? So but you want to improve the practice that you have in your kitchen so that then the food that you present is very well presented and it tastes good. So this is why the management practices are not shared with anyone. Only those people that are able to assess the portal are the ones that are able to, uh, and, and provide the data, the ones that can see the management, where this utility sits in the management practice. Myself speaking here, I cannot see what practices Mr. Castigo has in his management practices. I mean, of course, I can open the system because I, I have that asset, access, but in this, in this case, I'm not doing that because I want Mr. Castigo to be very honest with himself and to discover, okay, where am I pitfalls? Where do I need to improve so that I can move on, right? And then again, on management practice, we also want to improve and bring more uh, uh, indicators or more questions on, on climate change, on resilience, so that we can also, I mean, work towards this a better, a better, a better world. So this is how the, the management practices are presented. I know sometimes people have difficulties understanding this, and we are trying to try to present it in, in a more friendly way. But just going very quickly on this, this utility, which of course we have hidden the name, uh, this utility, what it does in terms of, of, um, of climate change, 
it's look it's it's on on three so from the left to the right one is not doing much and five is doing all that can be done right so the the darker the shade the more utilities are concentrated on that spectrum so for climate change it means that most utilities for climate change are here and then this selected utility is also here right if you go let's say for integrity uh, we should also look at that procurement as aspects, how the utility procures its st stuff to be honest with when, with, with customers, also with, uh, with, with, with suppliers. Then on, on that sense, also again, most utilities sit on this spectrum, but then this utility sits here. Uh, so that's that's what we say. And, and maybe one final just to say on human resources, which I mean, all of, all of utilities deal with human resources. Most utilities are here, which is a bit darker shade that we have on this line, but then this utility sits here. And one thing that I always struck me is on operations. And I know this question can be difficult, but you see most utilities in our sample, in terms of operations, they lie very low. So they are on two, on category two, meaning that yes, they're doing something, but they could, do, they could be doing more. While, for instance, on climate change, they're doing even better. So this is a little bit kind of assessment that we have. And we wanted to also share, share this in terms of countries. So if you go to the website, you will still see management practices or see this dashboard, but only for countries. And this will be for the countries where they have at least two or more. Because you still want people to see that these kinds of assessments are happening. But we want them to see that this is happening in terms of uh, of uh, of um, of, um, uh, of 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 the utilities that can do it themselves, right? So very very quickly, uh, just to finish on my side, uh, these are also kind of assessments that we want to do, where you can compare management practices and uh, uh, KPIs. So see the correlations. For instance, one that always struck us with very little that with the data that we have from 93 utilities that joined us. So we see on the, on figure one, which is on the right, that the better share of female employees that utilities get, the better management practices the utility also has. So this is something that you're still investigating, but these are the kinds of assessments that we want to do with the, with the data, that data that utilities provide to us. And we want to discuss this back with utilities to help, okay, if you improve your management practice on A, B, and C, then you, you may see improvements on this and that KPIs, right? So final, final slide, I think this is the final one that I have for me is on the um, partnerships. We are also partnering, partnering with the members that we have around the world. We have uh, the, the Association, of, uh, Association of Water Regulators in, 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 in South, Southern Eastern Africa. We have the Danube uh, uh, a partnership in, uh, in, in Eastern Europe. We have all others that we already have a partner with them. And then we, have, we, we, are, we, are, we are looking towards to, to connect with them. Mark, over. Thank you. Thank you, Berta. Um, remember, we also have the, the new community, uh, new Ibinet community. Again, this is a very new feature. A uh, very innovative feature, and it's a, a, a space already embedded in the new IBNet platform, uh, and it's basically for you, you know, for you to to take advantage and to to uh, set the set your meetings, uh, discuss, you no, know, as as these types of webinars. There is a safe space there, and the platform is totally free and accessible for for utilities regulators and anyone who has an, an interest in in. And, and, and communicating what they're doing and learning from others. Um, I think we have just uh, one one more slide. Uh, and uh, basically here is just to, to what, what Monica mentioned at the beginning. Uh, we are launching, we have launched this uh, very exciting no, learning event. It's called Learning at Kigali Initiative. Please, 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 if you're an utility already member of New Ibinet, just make sure that your data is uh, updated uh, from the last year and you will be automatically participating now in, in the process for these are all new utilities that are present today or people who know someone knows that works in utility, please help us spread the word. Um, the deadline is November 10, submit your data and you will get an opportunity uh, to, to visit uh, Kigali and learn in this important Congress that is hosted by IWA. With that, uh, I'll hand it over to you, Monica. Thank you very much for the opportunity.
<laughs> Thank you, everyone. So let's, I, I mean, you must have all gotten kind of curious. You were hearing about this. How does this work? Why would anybody actually do this? You have Marco and Berta tell you, yes, this is great for a utility, but isn't it terribly much work? And, you know, what, what is in it for a utility? So we have the great privilege to now have with us um, four distinguished representatives from different countries who have given this some thought and who have started working with the new IBNet system. Um, and we will travel around the world for this. So we will hear from Walter Aminas from uh, Manilat Water Company in the Philippines. We will hear from Mr. Castillo Alvaro Costa, chairman of the board, the water company in Maputo, we will hear from uh, Mr. Ahmed Aldach and Ms. Seval Yaman from uh, ASCII in Ankara in Turkey. And we will hear from Wendy Harrison Smith um, from the National Water Commission of Jamaica. And we will start in the order of how long they've slept in order to join us, because there is a time zone issue. And we're grateful that those of you who are in the Latin American, North American hemisphere have made time to get up and be with us. And I'll invite Walter, Wally, to tell us in a first go, just very briefly, you guys join new IBNet. How tough was it to actually do the um, self-assessment, the data, and are you using it internally in any way? Do you find it useful? Hi, Monica. Can you hear me well? First of all, uh, again, in behalf of my NILAD, thank you for inviting me in this panel. I feel honored yet humbled to be virtually with you all today. And my hope is that we are able to impart to this community our thought process and our experience in engaging with IBNet data platform that we may learn together in our journey towards SDG 6 fulfillment and operational excellence. In our case, it actually came as a decision that was easy to make. Unfortunately, it took uh, long, like a month or so, if you recall, but that was because it was a time where some of our decision makers had to battle uh, COVID personally. But as soon as everyone was around, it was an easy go-for-it decision. In understanding that decision and the hindsight, I see there were things that uh, pitched towards it. Number one, I think our data culture stems from one of our six corporate values, particularly commitment to excellence, which we see as a means to deliver our mission and manifest further the rest of our corporate values. It has to start from somewhere, right? In our case, uh, from one of our values. We, want, we wanted to continually improve for our customers, for our stakeholders, for our people, and for the communities we operate in. Second, the hope and desire to really deliver water and sanitation services to all. This really goes down to our shared SDG goals and to my NILAD's mission. We know there is much to be accomplished and yet so limited time and resources to do so. So certainly knowledge from other utilities and comparative performance and management practices can help us point to the right direction and priorities. And we were, uh, we were also then about to start our business planning for our six uh, rate rebasing exercise to cover 2023 to 2027. So for sure, either an affirmation or a new AHA that we could derive from the resulting reports from the platform then, uh, they can definitely help us have a more solid uh, plan forward. Worries of being vulnerable and uh, showing an area with a big gap, as uh, shown a while ago, uh, it actually sometimes come up, but the hopes are bigger, hence the decision. So uh, in terms of uh, usefulness of uh, the report, for example, uh, the item that uh, Berta showed a while ago, uh, we were wondering why, it, as a percentage, we were in the range of, uh, from an NR, uh, NRW standpoint, but yet, yet when we look at the liters per uh, hour per uh, connection measure, we were already out of the range. So, so uh, that kind of uh, you know telling data can uh, get us to really uh, deep dive and see that 
there is the consumption there is a, a level of consumption per uh, connection that plays a factor to the second measure which is not a factor in the first measure so uh that is just one of uh, the examples and uh uh, that's it. Uh, I hope uh, we we learned also from that uh, story that we shared. Thank you. Thank you, Monica. Thank you, Wally. And I was particularly intrigued by hearing from you that, of course, in terms of wanting to improve in your ability to provide water to everyone, you're looking around, but you're also uh, using your the comparison with others to build your business plan. And uh, um, somebody had asked in the chat earlier, how does one actually compare? There's been answers provided in the chat uh, to that. So there's, it's quite easy to do that. Now, we were in Manila just now with Wally, and we will now travel over to another city, starting with M. Maputo in Mozambique, to hear from um, Castigo Alvaro Costa. Castigo. You are part of the new IBNet partnership. How tough was it for you to actually work with this data, uh, trying to see how comparisons are not only on the screen, but are being discussed internally and used? Thank you, Monica. Uh, let me say hi for all participants of uh, this webinar. As Monica says, I'm Castigo Alvaro Cosa, and I'm leading uh, Metro Maputo Water Company as a shaman. <clears throat> uh, well, Metro Maputo Water Company, uh, it's a big uh, company that we have in Mozambique, uh, and we supply about um, two, three hundred thousand cubic meters a day for more than three million people and we also supply um, for 300 uh, 300,000 customers um so why uh, uh, we travel to new ibnet uh, platform so uh, um first of all we lives on the same world and on my point of view if we are in the same world uh, i think that we have a, 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 the same opportunity to get information as um, uh, marco says first we need know where we are to decide where we want to go we're using uh, new webinar in Maput to travel to Africa regional. So I'm talking about South Africa. We visit uh, Deben uh, campus or util utilities. We also visit uh, Pretoria. We visit uh, Cape Town and uh, Johannesburg. Uh, we also uh, travel to Angola, uh, Zambia, uh, and we make our assessment, our batch making. And we saw the level of service that uh, South Africa, South Africa utilities uh, have. It's so good, more than us. So from here, uh, we learn to them what we need to do better than, than, than others. So first, we look uh, a big challenge uh, like uh, non-revenue water. From um, from this um, program, like uh, we call it Payirpe on and Maputo Payirpe meaning um, water loss program, water loss uh, program, uh, 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 and with many 
pillars like in non-revenue waters, like efficiency energy, uh, collection, uh, human uh, uh, resource. So when we start with our program, we are about uh, more than 6% of losses. And in South Africa, they, they were about 30-35%. And we, uh, we discussed with my colleague, I, I hope they, uh, 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 they joined uh, in the webinar. And we uh, start with uh, uh, initiative to reduce law, uh, water loss. Uh, now we're talking about 45. We are from 63. Now we are talking five. Uh, uh, we're talking for uh, 45 percent. But <clears throat> driven by SD. SDG 6. We also uh, visit uh, uh, our neighbors, well, South Africa and, uh, and other countries. And we saw uh, that them about more than 98% coverage. And we still on 51. So we challenge, we challenge, we challenge us uh, to reduce water and solve water that we reduce to increase coverage. Uh, what um, uh, we we do how we do we 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 do this we do this um, for thanks to IB new IBNet platform and it, it's not difficult to fill data in the platform. It so is, and as Berta says, that platform show us the best practice that we have on the utilities. They show us that we, yeah, we um, manage our company with best practice, but tell us also that we have a big challenge in some areas like uh, gender, like uh, environment, uh, like uh, 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 new uh, uh, source, efficiency, energy. So, but uh, from this, we can provide all initiative to solve all gaps that we have. So, Monica, I will stay here for now. Thank you, um, Castigo, and thank you for the modesty with which you've been sharing the dramatic and impressive changes that you have achieved uh, in Maputo. I mean, from 63 to 40, my God, there's nowhere you cannot go. Uh, uh, going forward. And thank you for being such a valuable partner of New Ibina, just as Wally and the others that we're hearing from. So really, it's about being on a, on a learning journey, it seems. And it is about not only looking at your KPIs, even though they're super important, but also to look at these management practices, these 27 that you self-assess yourself, and then you discover, oh, maybe I could actually do things differently. Now, from Maputo, we're going to travel north to Ankara, where we will hear now from Ahmed Aladakh and his colleague Serval Ostrog Yaman uh, your experience with New IBNet, joining it, using the data, making use of it to improve. A um, couple of minutes from your perspective. 
Yeah. Thank you very much, Monica. Uh, I want to say hello to everyone. Uh, I would like to share uh, our experience with uh, new IBNet uh, data platform. Uh, but uh, before that, uh, I just uh, want to brief uh, explanation about uh, our situation uh, in Turkey. Uh, water utilities in Turkey uh, are organizations affiliated to uh, metropolitan municipality. So we have uh, our independent budget and a legal public entity. Uh, at the highest level, uh, there are uh, ministries to set the uh, regulation and the goals. Uh, they determine uh, all uh, regulations. And uh, at, uh, we, our side is um, just uh, implement uh, these regulations. Uh, we are the operation phase. So we, we have water and waste water treatment plants. We operate these. And we have uh, water, wastewater, and stormwater infrastructures. ASCII is responsible uh, for all these infrastructures. So that means uh, we are responsible uh, for implementation of uh, this infrastructure and these regulations. So we, uh, the minister says, OK, you will uh, send a report to us. Uh, so ASCII prepared that report and send it to ministry. In in that uh, time, we use uh, this system because we have already some data, but at the beginning we have some difficulties with the data, but right now uh, we, we are used to it. So uh, we are uh, just collecting these data uh, at ASCII, so send it to ministry also. So this platform, IB, new IBNet platform, uh, platform, helps us a lot in terms of um, in terms of uh, our management, self management, and also our uh, annual reports. So if you have the data, you can manage. If you don't have the data, you cannot manage. So in this case. Uh, uh, this platform is very useful to collect and to evaluate these data, uh, these records. So we use these uh, records uh, uh, for our reports and for the better management, uh, actually. Uh, we are serving with approximately 6 million people in our region. So we have a huge water utility, actually. Uh, we have uh, more than 5,000 uh, employees work at ASCII. Uh, so th this is a huge, very huge system, uh, water and wastewater and stormwater system. Uh, in in all uh, these things, we can we can say uh, this uh, platform, uh, these KPIs, very valuable for us to make uh, to make a better evaluation uh, for our uh infrastructure system uh let me see uh, but maybe we can we, we can uh, in the second round maybe we can just suggest uh, some additional kpis uh, in order to uh, to get a better uh, uh, assessment of ourselves in terms of energy in terms of climate climate change etc but uh, we are uh, a new participant for uh, I, uh, new IBNet system. Uh, but we learn a lot uh, for the technical uh, issues and also for uh, others' data to see the, our situation in a uh, clear manner. Thank you very much. And thank you, Ahmad. If I uh, may specifically. Um, also point out that you, just like anyone else in the new IBNet um, family, if you will, can also come up and suggest additional indicators that at some point we should add. There will always be the set of core indicators, right? And yeah. as, uh, as Marco has said, um, less is more. Um, but we are, and Berta hinted at that, um, talking to a number of people about expanding. The only additional piece to the core indicators will be on off-grid sanitation, which is something that so many utilities have come to us about that we feel it is and should be something on the core side. And then 
you, I mean, this is for you, new IB net. So you guys can tell us what else you want to use it for. And then, you know, we'll create space for you to do that. Now with that, let's now travel over to Jamaica where we will hear from Wendy Smith, who is with the National Water uh, Commission in Jamaica. Uh, the word commission is maybe misleading. Really, this is a very large utility that is providing water and sanitation services. So Wendy, how did you come to uh, join your IBNet and what is your experience in helping it elevate your space? Thank you, Monica. Um, Wendy Smith from National Water Commission here in Jamaica. Um, we are the primary utility provider for water and wastewater treatment in Jamaica. So for new IBNet, it was um it was during COVID as well, and it was seen as a platform that we could input a lot of our data. Um, as you know, utilities produce a lot of data, and sometimes it's haphazard and not stored and placed in one spot that you can get everything from. And so it was a nice way that all these KPIs, all these management practices, everything could be stored in one place and is easily retrievable. And the big positive with it is that we can compare ourselves with persons from all over the world, um, not just in our region, but also with other um, utilities across the globe. And so we are able to see where we are and plus where we want to be as our um, vision is to see ourselves as a number one utility in the Caribbean and Latin America. And this platform is able to show us where we are right now. And um, from there, we can build on our KPIs and our vision into where we would like to see ourselves. Um, Otherwise, inputting the data, I must say, was interesting. Um, we realized that some of the ways we store data, some of the ways we capture our data isn't quite global. And so it, it made us have to look at ourselves in terms of how we capture data, how we store data, and um, so that it's, it's able to be global and be able to put into these kind of platforms. And so it was a great learning experience. Um, the first time was harder, but with time, it has become much easier. Now we we basically, it, it's not as bad as it was before. Basically, now we can, we know where to get the data from, put it in, and are able to access the platform and, and make changes and plus see where we are. Thank you, Wendy. And I, it was beautiful to hear that. And, and we hear this from others too, sometimes that before you join your IBNet, some of you, I mean, every utility as, as Marco has said, has a lot of data, but it's in different places and it's not visually displayed uh, as beautiful. And as uh, we saw earlier in the presentation of Marco when, or actually when Berta pointed out where my Nilat is where, that's very rare that one can see that kind of comparison. But yes, it's work in the beginning, figuring out where all the various data points are that you need for the 15 indicators. That is a little bit of effort. Um, nothing, if you have the data, that would cost you more than an hour to just plug it in. But once you've done it once, it kind of uh, can keep you going. Now, we've got um, five more minutes because before we're closing um, this webinar. Um, and before we actually do this, I did want to point out, and particularly for those participants that have shared, uh, that have joined us more lately, is um, the call to join UIBNet has now an extra sweetener, which we didn't have when we were announcing the webinar together with IWA. And that is, um, many will know that in December, IWA is inviting people who are working, water professionals, their members and anybody else who's not a member to join them for a water and development congress in uh, Kigali in Rwanda. And we've heard earlier from Wendy and from Wally, but also from Castigo, that managing a, um, a water utility in a developing country is a whole other story. Um, so that congress will be quite an important space for people to learn fr from each other, to get ideas from others. And those of you who are submitting their data, joining you, I've been at newly, submit their data and their self-assessment, as well as uh, those 
who have already joined, but who are providing updated data for 2022. Those of you will have a chance to participate in a draw that we're doing amongst the submissions. We will sponsor, the new IBNet team will sponsor five participants to join the Congress in Kigali and to learn from each other. So if you are interested and want to get your utility into new IBNet or want to push for that, do make sure that utility joins new IBNet, submits the KPIs as well as the self-assessment on management practices. And then sometime by actually the, the deadline is November 10, I believe. Can somebody correct me if I'm saying it wrong? It's a Friday. Midnight Washington time. So, so those of you who are in Asia um, have time until the early morning hours of the subsequent day. Um, and uh, so time zones matter, of course. Uh, those of you who are joining from the African continent have time until also quite quite a long, a little longer than the midnight date timing. Um, but uh, do make sure that you join and that you get a chance to um, come to Kigali and learn from other utilities, uh, from what it took them to use their management practices going forward. Can we just all switch on our on the panel, our camera, so that I can say a word of thank you to those of you. Uh, here you do see um, people who have led the charge for using data for change as Wendy has spoken about changes that they've brought in, in Jamaica, as uh, Ahmed shared how they you know, were initially prodded by their government to submit data, but then discovered actual differences between themselves and others. A story that Castillo might be fine to switch, but we've seen this in, uh, in Maputo as well, where you figure out what the difference is and that gives you the the space, the organizational space to actually push for it. Something that Wally has told us is actually helping them be more and more ambitious in their, in their new business plan. Now, in the last three minutes, uh, can I just say, have from all of you one word of wisdom, one sentence from all of you, we're gonna travel again. We're gonna start the travel with Wally and then going over to Castigo, to Ahmed and then to Wendy, one word of wisdom for those of, uh, the, the participants still listening and maybe being on the edge. We've got two minutes. So everybody of you have 20 seconds. One word of wisdom, starting with Wally. I apologize for this. But I'm going to use a phrase. We in water are lucky when it comes to uh, data culture because uh, we are all partners towards uh, one end goal. And if you compare... Our, if we compare ourselves to like consumer goods industry, right, they have to fight for the purchase decision of the consumer. And so they, they have to uh, take more trade secret. So we in water sector is luck, are lucky rather. Thank you. And uh, uh, Castillo. Thank you, Monica. You say, uh, you say, you say, you all. I would like only to say without data, we can make any decision. Without the data, we never know where we are. So, uh, sharing data, we can go, we can uh, driving forward fast. The SDG, uh, SGD, SDG6. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So, using data, we can actually get to the SDGs, maybe the only way to do that. Ahmed. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Monica. Uh, it was a great opportunity uh, for this panel and uh, for uh, as uh, new IBNet, it's an opportunity for our utility uh, to make, uh, make self-assessment and to compare with other similar utilities. It, it was a very great uh, chance for us. Uh, we are we are very happy with that. Thank you very much. And you're going to stay with us, Wendy. Yeah. Uh, yes. Um, I'll only say with data, um, sustainability is possible. Thank you. And we're ending this on the dot, not without inviting all of you to come to newibnet.org. Find there where you can go register, click on share data, check out the utility reports, Click on share data and go there yourselves. And maybe we'll see you in Kigali. Yeah.
But anyway, we'll see you in the IBNet community. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you very much. Goodbye.